This lesson is going to focus on uh, Unit 1 of Richard and John, and we're going to look at life in a medieval village. Now, this is quite an easy lesson in terms of just how much we actually look at. Um, and there isn't too much that you can be asked, I don't think, in the exam. So we need to look at who the key individuals were on a medieval farm. We need to look at the activities um, and also look at why the king was important to the lives of peasants. Now, in terms of where this is, in terms of the scheme of learning, if you look down here, key topic one, this is unit one, English society. Now we have jumped a little bit, but we do this in a little bit of a different order. This focuses on bullet point one here, the nature of agriculture and peasant life. Now you need to know the difference um, between town and village, but you need to know the importance of what the village did for the whole economy. Now to do that, we must understand the type of people that lived there and the types of jobs that they did. So first of all, what you've got here is a picture of the manorial estate. That basically means the area that the farm, that the, the village was, and it's mainly based around farming. Now the chance is your manorial, the manorial estate would be an area that would centralise around the Lord, a manor house. So you've got here number one, which is a manor house, usually where the Lord lives. Now, in terms of a village, the Lord would probably be the knight. Now, if you think back to the feudal system lesson, the knight, the third person or third group in the feudal system, they would look after the running, um, mainly by probably looking after a castle. If you look here, this manorial estate is quite grand. And around it, you've got a range of, you've basically got a little village that, that centralises on farming activity. So first of all, there were three types of peasants in medieval England. So you've got the villain, who works three to five days a week. You've got the cotar, who works one to two days. And then you've got the freeman, who works really when they want, because they pay rent. They pay rent for their plot of land, their house. Whereas the villain uh, mainly pays, their, well, mainly gets land, because they're working it for the lord of the manor. Now, the villains were the property of the Lord and they could do what they wanted them to do. So they could, the Lord could do whatever they wanted apart from kill or injure the villain. They could sell them, find them and also move them on to another village if they wanted. Now, most peasants in medieval England worked on this manorial estate. And it was made up of one of one or several villages surrounding a manor house. So, as I mentioned, this number one picture here maybe that is the um, is the focal point this would be the lord or his bailiff live a bailiff was someone who looked after the land in a lord that's really important that we understand um, lord what you've got to understand here is that lords had land in different parts of the country so they couldn't be all of their land in one place at one time so bailiffs would basically look after it to make sure that it still ran smoothly now, although the Lord kept some of the land, the rest of the land was divided up to farm by the peasants. So this land here, number five, number nine, that was split up and the peasants would farm it. Now, this looks like the land's really close, but when we look at later, the land is actually quite far apart. The work on the land was supervised by a reeve. Now, basically, a reeve um, would watch what the peasants did. He divided out the work. He kept the account of the rents that the freemen paid and the sales which occurred based on the produce that was being made by the peasants. So the reef had um, a reef job was very much logistical. He made sure that it was organised, he made sure the peasants were doing what they should, it was really important. But by the end of the 12th century, just a little fact here that's quite important on, on broader historical knowledge, at the end of the 12th century, what a villain actually was, was changing, so many people were paying rent. So as time went on, the villain changed and the villain did become less of a you know someone who could be controlled and treated quite poorly and someone who paid rent because they actually had more economic opportunities maybe this might be because of the development of wool in england and how a lot of peasants became wool farmers and it was very very um very useful and they gained a lot of money from it but in this time period, what type of jobs did the peasants do? So we've got a range of jobs. So it really did depend on the quality of your land. 
if the quality of the land was poor, then the jobs were much more taxing. It's like if you have a garden with really poor soil, the chance of growing flowers is very unlikely. Very similar with crops. If you have poor soil, the chance of having a successful harvest is even, it decreases. Most peasants were involved in growing crops. It was vital to the economy and feeding the country. Now, farming land was split, in, split into three sections. One field was usually left empty, fallow, and this was to allow for the soil to recover. So if we go back here, just quickly draw a few bits on here. So you've got three pieces of land, one, two, three. One of these is usually left empty. So let's say this one is left empty. That's so the soil can recover. Now, what happens with this land is, is one big piece of land and it's split into strips. Each peasant will be given strips of land in this land, this land, this land, and not all given strips of um, land in the same area. That's because some land was better than others. So if we go back here, the fields were split into strips. Peasants had strips in different fields. They could be miles apart, it could be quite difficult. But the positive here is that good and bad strips could be shared out equally. The fields were ploughed, sown and harvested by the villains. So they were dug up, they were derooted, their seeds were planted, and then harvested means they, the, the crops were pulled up by the villains. A very demanding the lions had to grow the same crops in the field, so the crops varied on the soil type. So the most common um, crops that were grown in England in the medieval period were barley, wheat, rye, and oats. Crops were taken to the mill to be ground, and the villains had to pay a fee for this. So after it was harvested, the villains then had to pay to have their crops grounded, which would, would help to feed their family, but they had to pay. And peasants also kept animals. They may have had a cow or a sheep. They would graze the land after harvest to bring up the, the roots. But villains once again, had to pay for this right. So even though they had opportunity to do things, the villains were very limited. They were constantly asked to pay for, for, for things to allow them to have a better life. Now, what we need before we look at a GCSE practice question is the positives and negatives of a peasant's life. I'm just going to put a um, little statement. So you just got to decide is it good or bad? There's a little revision activity. You can then explain it in a bit more detail. So I will attempt to draw the faces, even though they'll come out pretty poorly, but it's fine. Now, the tools that peasants used made a physically demanding job. Well, that's obviously going to be sad. That's bad for them. Um, the fact that it made it, it was a physically demanding job, made it more difficult for them to put the work in that was needed. The peasants' work day began at dawn and lasted until dusk. What that means is, you got, is it's a very, very long day. Especially if they've got bad tools, these two link, that could lead to real sadness, extra sadness. Peasants lived in small houses called crack houses with thatched roofs. Now, the fact they had a house might be seen as slightly positive, but these crack houses would have had infestations. They wouldn't have been, they would have been insulated, but they wouldn't have been the most comfy houses. They would have had to sleep on the floor with straw. They may have even also had to share their house with their animal. The walls of the peasant's crock house were woven together and plastered with manure. This was known as wattle and daub. Now, I'm going to put a sad face and a smiley face here. That's the worst smiley face ever. Because even though it may have smelled, even though the hygiene would have been quite poor, it, the manure and being woven together would have, um, would have been quite highly insulated, so they would have been warm. The floors were covered in straw that could be changed easily when it got dirty. Well, that's good because basically you're just chucking the straw out and then replacing it. One thing you're not going to be short of in medieval England was straw. The work peasants did depended on the season. Spring, fields were sown with crops. Summer, crops were harvested. Autumn, fields were ploughed. Now, I'm going to put a sad face. And the reason for this is because it means that that's a really long sad face. The life. Okay. Every season they were doing something. 
Medieval women were controlled by men. Women's authority is nil. That shows that women had very little um, chance of aspiring in medieval England. In a town, it was different. But if you were a medieval woman in a village, you're having a difficult life. Medieval peasant women had to carry out all domestic duties, including caring for children, cooking, spinning and weaving. Again, they weren't given the same rights. They did also have to help in harvest time. They had to help the man um, harvest the field to help, um, obviously, with the development of crops. Peasant women also had part to play on the land, especially at harvest when she would help bring in the crops. Again, it just shows that women have no, have no chance to, to, to aspire and develop and have their own career when they are bounded by the land and the law. Children of peasants did not go to school. As soon as they were old enough, they joined their fathers in the field. Very little opportunity. Peasants also enjoyed merrymaking. Maybe basically means they get drunk. As their religion was connected to paganism, the peasants also enjoyed sport. It shows that they did have some aspect of freedom. And the last one says, as all peasant festivals were connected with ale drinking, with the biggest honour going to the man who could empty the largest tankard. However, ale was expensive, so peasants could not indulge often. I'm going to put sort of half-half here because it couldn't indulge often, but it means you actually did have some form of freedom to a degree. So that makes you understand what a peasant's life was really like. Now, the reason we've done this is because at GCSE, in the Richard and John paper, the first question you will get is a full mark, describe two features question. Now, this question requires you to spend about four or five minutes on, and what the examiner is looking for is basically two big facts. Two big facts, and the key thing here is the more keywords, the better. So if you have a look at this feature here that I've written, feature one, medieval villages did a lot of farming. Now, believe it or not, that would probably get one mark. Why? You've identified a fact. To get the second mark, you need to take it further. So you could be talking about how peasants did plowing, sowing, harvesting, how there were three different types of peasants, talk about some of the jobs they did in the farming process to get that second mark. As a practice, you could do this question, okay, but by using what we've been through in this, in this video, so you could talk about the manorial estate, as long as it links the question of two facts, two key standout things. Now, the way in which I explain this question is if you're asked to describe two features of the face, you would write about two things that you can write a lot about. So for example, if you said one feature of the human face was the mouth, you could write a lot about that. You could say, we well, use the mouth for talking, et cetera, et cetera. Eyes, ears, nose. You wouldn't choose a feature to write about that you can't write much about. So one feature of the human face are the eyelashes. I don't think you can write too much about that. You'd only choose a feature. Feature is something that stands out, not something that's just something you can write something for and you're limited on. OK, so remember, two features are extended facts that actually mean something, not something that doesn't, that isn't that important. OK, so if there's a practice, you can give that a go. You should be able to identify if you've got the full marks yourself. So if you give it a go and then go back through this video, you can then understand and mark your own, see if you get the four out of four. So going back to the beginning, have we identified? Of medieval village, yes, we've got the key individuals, we've looked at the activity, and we looked at why the king was important in the life of peasants. Because the king's feudal system very much develops um, this concept. And our key words, there's just two words here that I want to just touch upon before I finish. Weak work is the normal work that, uh, that the peasants do, and boon work is the extra work they do during, um, during times of harvest. So again, if you want to go back and give that four marker a go, that would be really important to develop your own understanding of that exam question type.